The patients come from all over Belgium. Before entering foster care, a team from Giel Central Psychiatric Hospital carefully screens them. Psychiatrists, psychologists, and social workers determine who will be eligible for the program. Dangerous patients, pedophiles, are automatically excluded. Once a patient is placed, a psychiatric nurse like Mark Hendricks and a psychologist like Wilfred Bogart monitor the relationship. Do you see improvement in their conditions as they spend more time in this family uh, situation? I think they are feeling better. That's very important. After a, t after a time, they feel better. Because when they enter in a family, the family tries to give them uh, responsibility. Even very light things, to wash dishes, to clean up the house, to work a bit in the garden, uh, such little thing. And by getting this responsibility, they are feeling better. They feel someone. <laughs> and in an institution, they never get such, such a responsibility. For 45 years, Jeff and Clara have lived together as brother and sister. She was a mentally ill child when Jeff's mother took her in. When his mother died, he took over the responsibility. Today, it's sometimes difficult to determine just who is looking after whom. And so it is with Caroline, Paulina, and Lillian, who call themselves the Three Musketeers. Paulina spent decades in various institutions and has been cared for by Caroline for the last eight years. So has Lillian, who's been with the family for more than 30 years. They share household chores, go out together, and seem as inseparable as the musketeers themselves. They are not dangerous. They, they tell some, some tell every time the same thing, and then we, we laugh with it. <laughs> and uh, we know them, so they are, they are very friendly. We like them here. It's a custom here in, in Hill, so we can live very good with the people. It's normal for us. Patients still have to take their uh, psychiatric uh, medicines. But still, uh, by, by these patients, uh, a number of them are getting lower and lower medication after a while. You reduce the medication? Usually after, uh, let's say, six months, if we see some stability in the situation of the patient, then the level of neuroleptic medication that's given to a patient is reduced. Marceline is retarded and has serious behavioral problems. She's been living with the family of Chris and Magda Roaldams for eight years, along with two other patients, Irma and Margareta, and the Roaldams' four children. The Roaldams receive about $13 a day per patient. That stipend is an important incentive, but according to mental health professionals, money alone cannot account for the warmth within these extended families. Baird has been with the Lomeland family for most of his life. He was first taken in by Joseph Lomeland's mother. When she died in 1970, Baird moved in with Joseph. It's simply the dumb thing in this town. Mark is 32 and has been diagnosed as schizophrenic. For four years, he's been living with Staff, his foster father, and Hugo, another patient. He keeps in touch with his biological parents, but feels more secure with his foster family. Why are you here in this foster care? I don't really know, but I don't mind being here, so I don't ask myself why I am here. I think the people are good here, and I like it here. Do you feel at ease? Yes, that's very well. In the beginning, it was a little bit problem, but now it's going very well, I think. How did you learn to speak English so well? Um, first of all in school, and then in university I had some English, and then with watching very much television I also learned much more English. Jan van Rensenbergen, the director of the Central Hospital, oversees the family care program. We have our own hospital connected to the family care system. So whenever a patient is in a crisis, or he had a problem, or he was not behaving properly or in, in that family, he's taken in again 
for one week, for two weeks, for as long as it takes until he's stabilized again and then he can go back. So being taken away from that family, be put in our central hospital, even that small step within Gale is felt for a patient as, as, as a very severe punishment. In an institution, I, it's, I think all they do there is giving you pills and for the rest they don't look at you. And, but here you really get people who care for you. Of the 650 family care patients, about 250 go out to jobs in workshops run by the hospital. They do bicycle repair, simple woodworking jobs, electronic assembly, and packaging for local businesses. <laughs> Dr. Matthew Dumont, a psychiatrist at the Westboro State Hospital near Boston, was one of the first American doctors to study Gill's approach to the mentally ill. It's not just the treatment of the patients and the fact that they're integrated in the town. It is the impact on the rest of the community, not involved with family care of patients, of a social system where, where everybody else, uh, everywhere else in the world, uh, a population that is socially marginalized, treated with uh, disdain, abhorred, feared, is accepted, tolerated, welcomed. <laughs> you would not see a person uh, lying in the street, homeless in Kiel. Whether or not they were a patient, there would be a sense of responsibility for that person. There would be a community concern for anything that looked bizarre or disorganized mm. or threatening of a child. And three plus three? A population that treats the mentally ill with such acceptance, with such tolerance, is a tolerant community. It's a community defined by its inclusiveness rather than its exclusiveness. And I think that's quite beautiful. Mm. Yeah.